Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, I'll just wait for confirmation that my sound is working. Before I get started. Excellent. Perfect, thank you. Just uh, do let me know in the stream if my sound gets a little bit, my microphone's not set up right and you need it dialing down a bit or up. Um, all right, well, welcome back. Thank you for joining us on episode two of um, Be Like a Cross, uh, a solo RPG. Um, this is a strange, if you're just joining us this first time, this is a strange little game that I wrote, that I created. Um, it started off on two A4 sheets of paper. Uh, it, it got kick-started at um, a ridiculous amount of backers, and so I made it into something much uh, much bigger. And I'm currently working on a Crothulu expansion, so it's um, a journaling RPG. And, uh, yeah, if you missed the first episode, you can go to our YouTube channel, which is um, just forward slash critical kit, um, and you can watch the first episode. We upload all of those there the day after. Um you can also catch up with um, some other things I do. So a couple of times a month, I create um, um, I, I do um, a stream where I play a and d one shot that I've written. We've got one on there, Macdeath, a murder mystery that I wrote and played on Saturday. Excuse any, excuse any background noise. I've got a motorbike um, going in the background. Um, and yeah, the other... Sorry about that. The other thing is that, um, what else do we do? Oh yeah, and on um, Tuesdays I've started doing a world building session, so that's, if you're interested in world building in RPGs or D&D, that's a lot of fun to join. Um, we're doing it interactively, so I'm kind of shepherding the construction of the world, but um, everybody in the chat is throwing the ideas in and they're all going into the world, so that's a lot of fun. So far we've got a tavern and a village, that's also up online now, so you can watch that and see where we got. Okay. Let's get started with this because I'm pretty excited about today because um, last time we ended, I was about to level up. So I will level up, but I'll just do a quick um, recap of the story. Um, so I created um, a fledgling rook called Edgar, whose nest was in a, a ruined church. He, we were playing in the Gothic crow setting. Um, being the scrawniest of his siblings, Edgar was thrown out of the nest at a, a very young age, which is not uncommon with crows. Um, whilst rummaging for fresh insects and worms amongst the shattered pews, he meets a small rabbit named Barbara. Um, Barbara explains that she is a magician's rabbit, but um, a rival magician cursed her with blindness. That's something I've added since the last um, since the last um, session we did, because um, I was just I was just um, narrating it. But once I start writing it, I get a few more ideas. Um, so the thing is, in order to um, get her job back, Barbara has to get her eyesight back because she's been cursed by a rival magician. So she has she's explained that um, on her travel, she met a squirrel who told her about a magic locket in the haunted woods, which is going to be the dead forest down. I don't know whether you can see that. Um, let's just have a look down here in the far corner of the map. Um. Edgar, wanting to prove himself better than his siblings, agrees to help Barbara and tells her he will return soon before flying south. Um, he's not in flight long before he notices a murder of crows performing a funeral for a fallen friend in the reeds of an expansive and treacherous bog. Uh, he lands and helps them uh, with their ritual and as thanks their elder, the old crow offers him a gargoyle's finger. Um, as Edgar flies off on his mission to find the locket... Um, oh, Edgar carries on on his mission to find the locket... But as he does, one of the crows catches up with him, offers him another quest to search for a... to perform a funeral for a dead badger. Um, they'd seen the dead badger on uh, on an island somewhere on a lake. Um, in the air, he meets some ravens. Another ritual has been performed, and after a long and arduous flight, he helps, he helps them again, and he's given um, a buffalo bone die, which um, gives me um, some authority on certain card draws um 
Edgar then spots something on land, which is a white raven's feather quill. He dislodges it from rock and it's stuck under. He takes it. On his travels, he also picks up a scorpion sting. Um, he disregards his... He disregards... What does he disregard? I believe he actually disregards... I've got it all written down here. Um... Oh, he disregards his quill. So he disregards his quill right near to the bone, to the graveyard. He then flies um, south, where at the lake he meets um, Fehan, an elder rook. Fehan asks if Edgar can find a troubled writer who he believes is trying to raise an army of undead militant rats. So um, Edgar puts two and two together and figures that this dead badger um, has been killed by this writer and he decides to head and stop this this horrific thing going ahead, This this raising of the rats. Um, he goes to the island and soon finds a small outhouse where he um, he also finds a poison dart, which he believes the murderer is using to poison animals. So the badger is part of a sacrifice. And let's see, he gets in a bit of a scuffle with the writer. He, the writer manages to knock the poison dart out of Edgar's beak. And sensing he's cornered, Edgar sings a distress call. He's lucky because another rook named Hops Valley's nesting in the gutter of this house, flies in through the windows, helps him, finds the poison dart, and um, Edgar manages to poison the murderer. I don't know whether that makes Edgar a murderer. I hope not. Um, so, where we got to there is that we actually did complete two objectives, which were we, um, we performed a funeral for the studious badger, which we did actually after we'd killed the... Um, murderer, and we also stopped the ritual being performed, which was Fairhand's task. So we could go back and see them, but th at this point in time, because we created, because we completed two objectives, we can now level up. So let's level up. Let's get our character sheet and see what we do. So we have to level up from two areas in this game. The first, the first place that we level up is um, in our actual species. So we're a rook. So there'll be instructions in there on what we can do. And the second place that we level up is our setting also gives us some boons or favours or things that we can do. You'll see that I have marked my book because there's several settings and several places you need to be in the book when you're playing. It's good to have some good to have some tabs. I'd also mention as well, I don't think I've got the same zoom issue as I did last time. Everybody should be able to see everything really nicely because I had I've put manual zoom on the webcam now. So it just it should just focus correctly. So you should better see things. Okay, so let's level up. So the first thing I need to do is come to my rook and see what we get um, as a rook. So as a rook, starting at fledgling stage and each stage you advance, you can add two ticks. So I'm now not a fledgling anymore. So I'm going to make a little bit of a mess of my sheet. I'm now a juvenile, which means I probably I've mastered flying I'm getting a little bit more worldly wise I've still got a lot to learn but um probably quite full of myself I've I I did have a um I did have an easy run the last time I played this I a lot of my skill checks went in my favor I have watched um, a couple of other people playing this and their skill checks did not go in their favor so I feel like I got lucky last time so um I think I still really need a test. Maybe fighting the murderer was my first real test. So we can add two ticks to any one skill. So um, let's have a look. What I want to do, I'm, I'm starting to form an idea of what Edgar is. He's a rook, so rooks are quite friendly. So I'm big in befriend. I have befriended a lot of people. So two ticks to any one skill. Or do I go for something... Um, what did I use last time? What did I use? Navigate, hop. Um, I could increase my flying skill, which would make sense. I, I'm going to increase my flying skill because that kind of story-wise, that makes sense. I've done quite a lot of flying now. Um, you can also add one tick to a single skill from each of your main skill categories. Um, okay, so let's have a look. We can add one skill to a single... Right, okay, so let's have a look. So I have I think I'm going to take Navigate because I do know now I've got some things to find. So I feel like Navigate is more finding my way around the geographically, whereas Search is more finding things that I want 
in my immediate vicinity, finding objects, I guess, or finding other creatures. Um, in the combat side of things, I do like an evade. Um, I think Edgar does want to be a hero, but he wants to be a hero that doesn't get too many uh, bruises and scrapes, so he's going to take an evade um, point. In social interaction, he's going to take... What did he... He was pretty good at rituals. Oh, no, that, sorry, that's tools and rituals. He was pretty good at... Um, He's not very scary at the moment. He's quite scrawny, so I can't really justify adding anything to scare. He is a rook, though. He's quite gregarious. We said this, so I'm going to really boost his befriend. Um, let's have a look. Um, and we're going to do... Oh, sorry. So we get signal, preen, and check as well. So we'll do... I'll do one to his singing because he did well at singing last time. So I feel like he's developing his voice. And then we'll do um, signal. There we go. Preen. Preen's a good one for healing. And peck and fly. So my flying's getting quite good and my peck skill. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right. Okay. Um, and I've also got this special ability that before making any skill check, I can use to make a sing check. All right. So that's that side of the leveling up done. Let's move on to the gothic setting because other things happen here. So now I'm a juvenile. Um, I make a dark deal. I align myself with a vampire bat who bestows you with um, several of their magic abilities. So you can add one tick to befriend, scare and preen. So this is really good. What's worth noting about this, even though I am bumping up a lot of skills here, there is a maximum of six. Because ultimately we are small creatures, so there's um, it's not like D and D where we become these fantastically powerful heroes. There's a maximum of what we can do, and it's very unlikely you would get six in all of them. You'll get a few with six in, which become your specialities. So I'm going to add one to preen, um, befriend, and I get a little scare there. I mean, so I guess we have to. Um, oh, we get something else on this as well. That's quite cool. So I guess we have to befriend, scare, and preen. So befriend is really, I'm nearly maxed out on befriend, which is fine because I didn't want to be a fighter. Okay. So um, the vampire bat will also instantly appear giving me aid and granting me two attacks on subsequent rounds. Um, so I can forsake my attack. So I'm going to write that down in the front of my book. I've got... Um, I've got a section here where I just like made a little scratch pad, uh, which tells me a few things. So um, what I can actually do is, instead of an attack, and I will, I'll, I'll flesh out the story of how I met this vampire bat in a second. Instead of an attack, I can make a. What am I making? Do I have to make a check, or can I just call upon? This thing. I, you see, I wrote these rules and I still have to refer to them. Um, they will instantly play granting you two attacks on subsequent rounds. Okay, and come on, turn your phone. I'll just call on them, so there's nothing to do. I can I can make a call on them. Okay. And I get two attacks for the rest of that combat on my turn. Okay, I can plus get two attacks. So let me just have a quick re um, review of what I've got, then I don't forget anything. So I'm looking for a locket with a torn photo. So I've also brought Barbara's objective. I completed two objectives, which leveled me up. I now have to complete four to get from adult to juvenile. So I don't think I'll finish everything this session. And also, I'm quite tired today. We had a very early morning this morning. So I'm going to see how I feel. If I can do the, the hour and a half session as normal, I'll, I will do it. I might jump off a bit earlier. Um, okay. But that is good. We've got that. So... I can call, so I've got two things at the moment I can do. I can call on, because this actually works, because I did say at the beginning I was quite a gregarious creature. I can call on other rooks in the area to help me out with things, which I did last time when I was in a bit of trouble. And now I can also call on a vampire bat to help me, but only in um, fighting scenarios. Okay, so let's play. Um, I'm going to say that... Um, story-wise, I've just, 
So I have just finished dispatching of this murderer. Um, I also met Hopsval, the rook, who helped me. Now I see, as Hopsval's communicating with me, I see a fear in their eyes, and they they suddenly just quite quickly say their goodbyes and fly off um, back up to their nest, and I get the sense that there's something behind me, and indeed there is. I see a pair of red eyes in the corner of the um in the sort of corner of the gable sort of roof of this this outhouse that i'm in i get quite scared um in the in the crothulu expansion that i've got coming up there is actually a brand new rule for fear so that's interesting so i would use that. and i might even once i've released that i might actually add it onto this session because it it, it can be used in in the other settings so oh i've also got three injuries i forgot about that i i did have quite a tough fight last session so there's a few things there's a bit of housekeeping i've got to do here um anyway i i, I fear for my life and i'm about to try and fly away when i feel almost like a hold on me a grip and yet nothing's got hold of, hold of me and i hear a voice in my head that says do not run you are fine. And I look around and I feel myself being drawn to this this creature. It looks like a bird to me. And then I realise as I get closer to it, it's hanging upside down. So this, this bat, this vampire bat, which I don't know what a vampire bat is. I just think it's a, a strange kind of bird or a, a flying mouse or maybe even one of the undead rats. Um... Yeah, I I still hear its voice in my head. I'm expecting any moment it's going to attack me, but instead this bat tells me that it's grateful that I managed to get rid of this 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 murderer, this this um dark magic presence that had invaded its territory. It's um it's a bat that's lived a long time on its own. It's happy on its own. It 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 feeds off some of the wild life life around here. Um, a human is not a human is way out of its league. Um, so yeah, this 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 bat is thankful to me. It's also thankful that the army of undead um, rats didn't get raised because that would have been a real threat to it. Um, and it it thanks me and says that if ever I need to call on it, I can call on it. Although I do sense that there may be a price to pay in the future. So we shall see if. I want to do that, and as such, it its eyes dim, and it vanishes back into the darkness. Before I can even ask it its name, so um, let's see. Would I ask it its name? Uh, I think I'd want to get out of there because the other side of this is Barbara's still blind. Barbara the bunny is still blind back up in the graveyard. So um, we need to head south, and we've also got a lake to go across. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to say I've taken all my turns um, on land. So I I am able to just take off. That's fine. And I'm going to do that. So the way this game works, if you haven't played it before or haven't seen it, um, it's like some other German games. It uses a deck of cards. Now, when you start a new session, you are allowed to shuffle the cards. Um, last session, I used all of my jokers. So um, there are two ways to play this game with jokers. You can keep a record of what jokers you have between sessions. Or you can play Procurl mode where between sessions you put your jokers back. And whenever you deplete the, the, the play deck, you also put your jokers back. So if you, so it kind of gives you almost a time limit. You're forced to use your jokers at certain times. Um, that's the Procurl hack though. Um, I don't, I'm not using that here. I'm well I kind of am I guess I'm putting my jokers away between sessions but um anyway um yeah so sorry I didn't I didn't use my I used all my jokers sorry last session that's fine okay so let's let's see where we go from here so I need to keep flying south because ultimately what I'm looking for is I'm gonna have to pick up some more objectives that's meta gaming um Edgar's not really that bothered about picking up objectives he just wants to go find this locket that will magically help Barbara so he he takes off into the air. It's 
this land that I'm in now is cloaked in a mist. It's dark. It's almost like constantly twilight here. So it's um, it does get dark, but the daytime doesn't get bright. So we're going to move. We're going to fly over this airy castle. So I fly to the next hex. I am going to need to take a turn. Or draw an event, should I say. That is part of a turn. So I am going to draw a card. And the card I draw is the Eight of Clubs. Which is now I draw. I turn to events. I pick events in flight. Um, and I see some crows performing a funeral in a location. I can land and help them. And they will gift me. Um, I'm going to say I'm... I'm not going to land and help them because I've already helped to um, I've already helped some crows and some ravens doing something, and I'm becoming um, conscious that the time is going on, uh, getting on, and I may have to pay for this if they notice me. I'm gonna try and do. Um, I'm gonna try and do. A fly check to see if I can get high enough so they won't notice me and try call on my help. So I think that's that's fair. Um, so a queen, but I got four to a fly check. So a queen is the equivalent of um, 12. So it's 10, jack, queen, that's 12. Um, so I need to get with my four, I need to get eight or more on this draw. And I get a jack. So I can, I can get myself, even though I'm quite young, I can get myself to a height where... I'm high enough up in the mist that these um, these birds do not bother me. I'll put... Let me just put my character sheet. doesn't need to be there at the moment. Or does it? Yeah, I guess it does. I'll put my draw, my discard pile there. Okay, so I'm going to rule that I, I, I get past those. That's fine. Um, because I'm, I'm just... I'm on a mission now. I can see ahead the dead forest. Um, I'm going to move to the next hex. And I'm going to draw another event. In flight. Ace of... Hearts. Okay, so create your own event or draw again from this table. I am going to say that the mist thickens around me here. I'm coming up to the edge of the lake. The mist is rolling. In fact, there's an area here called the mist. So the mist is rolling in now across the, ra across the lake. I have come down a little bit lower. And the problem I'm going to have here now is to navigate. So I'm going to... Before I move, I'm going to judge that on this rule that on this turn I've got to make a navigate check. So I'm going to navigate. So I'm going to see. So the target is Jack. So I, I, I've got one. I have one tick on my navigate score, which means I have to get ten or more to to equal the Jack. Ace is a law in this game. So unfortunately for me, I get lost. Oh dear. Um. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a homebrew rule because that's what this game is about. It tells you it, you can create homebrew rules. Uh, I'm going to get one of my favorite things. I'm going to get a, a die. This is a oh, this is a D4 from our new Minor Arcana. Quick plug for our Minor Arcana Kickstarter, which ends in three days. Um, just go on Kickstarter and search for Minor Arcana dice. I'm going to roll this and I'm going to say that from the jetty one to three, four is, is which square, uh, which... Um, one, two, one, two, three, four. So I know I'm kind of heading south, but I'm going to say which one, one, two, three, four, which one I end up in. So we've created our own homebrew role here. But you can do things like this. If you want to add any kind of random, if you want to flip a coin for a 50-50 choice, if you want to roll a die that makes, if you've got six options, if you want to roll a D6, I'm rolling a D4. Fortunately, one, two, three, that kind of does set me off going in the direction I want to be in. In case you're wondering, you didn't watch last week, what these two tiny little die here are. I dropped these on the map to say where I've dropped objects. So I've made a note of things I've dropped because we can only carry two items at a time. Okay, so let's do this. Let's, let's, we've flown into a new, um, a new hex. I can see the dead forest closing in now. I'm going to draw five of spades. I'm going to draw another event in the air. I'm going to try and stay in there because I'm, you know, I, I'm i fully aware that every time I land, there's a lot of trouble out there for me. Um, okay, so I spot a congregation of magpies in their nests. 
Um, so I'm going to say that they are, um, let's have a look. Because I'm, so this is sometimes you have to change the prompts if they don't make sense. But I spot a, um, a group of magpies flying around. They're lost in the mist. Um, I can choose to make a befriend check. And if I, I'm guessing if I make that check, I can help them out of here. And it says here, if I succeed, I can make a preen check with authority and heal two injuries. So I, I, I kind of need this. And I know magpies are pretty good at healing. They're good at this kind of ritual. So I'm going to, I'm going to take this. So let's do this. So the first thing I need to do is make a befriend check on these magpies. So the target is going to be seven. My befriend score is one, two, three, four, five. Five. I've got. I'll just bring this forward again. I've got five on befriend, so I need to get two basically. If I if I draw an ace, I've lost this. So this is a, a safe one for me. Okay. So I got a nine. Brilliant. So that means that I I fly up to these magpies. The magpies are, are very standoffish, and they they don't really want to know me. But when I tell them that I know which direction they need to go in because I've just come out of the mist, I can help them. Um. They agree to um, to help me, to help me with a healing ritual. So we're going to make a preen check. So the, the magpies are all going to start flying around me. One by one, they're going to inspect me. Where they can, they're going to sort of like peck at my feathers, pull them back into shape. Uh, let's see what happens. Preen check coming up. I got to get a three. And... Uh, yeah, so I've got four preen, I've got three, so there's no way I can, there's no way I can lose this one, so I'm not actually going to draw. So that's lovely, that means that I can get, I'll just cross those out now. So I've only got one. I saw someone doing this, there's there's someone else who does um, um, a stream of this, and um, they actually put the ticks in their book, which seems a lot better idea than using the character sheet as you're going along. But you know, this is fine for now. I'm going to put a cross in that one, actually. So I've got one. Or, or laminate. I have actually got a laminate card. Using a laminate, laminate card would probably be better. Okay, so I... The end of that turn, I managed to heal a, heal a wee bit. That's good. So I'm, I'm heading on for the forest because I've still got an objective to get. I've still got to do this. So I'm heading down. I'm coming over land now. And the forest is looming up um, upon me. I'm going to take a another check in flight which is a queen of diamonds oh no okay so <clears throat> it starts to rain torrentially um i'm gonna have to land because this this rain is buffeting me about there's there's a lot of um sort of high wind up here um i thought i was a good flyer i've i'm really getting my first test i've been very lucky with the weather so far so i am going to um I'm going to make a search check for a place to shelter. And then we'll see where we end up. So firstly, I need to make a search check. Okay, so I'm going to make a search check. So I have to beat five. That's my target. And I get a six. So I make my search check. So I can descend onto land. So I have to take my next two turns there. But also it's a location. It, so I have to generate a location, which is going to be fun. It's always fun to see if these work, because I'm on land, so um, let's have a look. Prompt. So we've got objectives, locations. Here we go. So we're going to draw a location. So let's see where we end up. Also, please share the stream with people if you know anybody that might like to watch this kind of thing. Um, every every viewer helps. Um, so King, and we can all have a lot of fun following the story. So King of Spades. The clock tower of an isolated country church. Okay, so there is a... On the edge of this um, river um, lake, the banks of this lake, there is um, a church. I guess there's also a, a small village if there's a church. So there's an outcrop here. So let's let's give um, let's give this place a name. Let's give this place a name. Um, I haven't got. Uh, if anybody does want to throw a name for a place in the chat, I'm happy to. I don't normally do this one as interactive, but I'm happy to start doing that. So if anybody does want to throw a name in, we'll give this little village, um, Gothic village, uh, a name. And in the meantime, I am going to see if I run into anybody down there. 
Let's have a look. Um, there's no one there, but so I can take a rest, which is which is fine. So I'm going to take a rest down here. Um, so that will that stops me getting an injury. I would have got an injury if I couldn't have had a rest. So that's good. So I guess I wouldn't. I don't know the name of this place anyway because I'm just a cry. I just I just managed to get in the clock tower. Um, the clock's broken. It's not working, uh, which is fortunate for me because I don't want get getting caught up in any gears or anything. Um, and yeah, but I'm landed now, so I have to take two turns in this clock tower. So let's take a turn in the clock tower. Here we go. I'm uh, oh, sorry, we should be still back at events. There we go. So we're going to do events on land. We're not technically on land, but what it means is that we're landed. We're not actually flying. So let's draw Ace of Diamonds. Uh, you meet a potential mate. What is their name? If you're looking for love, make a mate check on success. They will accompany you on your adventures. Well, at this moment in time, um, Edgar only has um, his mind on Barbara and getting her eyesight back. So he kind of nests down awkwardly um, for the night in this place. There is another um, rook in here on the other side. Um, it's a bit awkward. Um, but anyway, he gets um he gets a good night's sleep and waits until the rain uh, the rain subsides. Um, he has to take another event, so we'll take the next event in the morning and we'll say that he has a good night's sleep. Ten of hearts. Oh dear, the weather makes a turn for the worse again. So it kind of makes sense. He's just about to head off the he 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 sort of wakes up in the morning and the other rook has gone. For some reason, obviously the other rook knows the area or was wise enough to um, to see the rain coming. Bit rude though, not telling me. But then again, I didn't really speak. I suppose I was being a bit standoffish myself. Uh, if you're indoors, ignore this prompt and draw another. That's fine. Okay, so I can just take another turn here. King of Hearts. Okay. Create your own event or draw again for this table. So I'm going to do a search check and see if I can find anything that might be of use around here. Because I can create my own event. So I'm just going to do a search check. And see if anything's of any use around here. So let's do a search check. So the target for this search check is 8. to See if I can find anything. I draw a king. Um, in which case, let's go get an object. Let's go find an object. So we can go to the object table. So one of the things about this is once you've played it a few times and you get comfortable with it, you don't, or if you've played D&D &D before and DM'd, you don't have to wait for the prompts to tell you to search for objects. If it feels like something you want to do and you're on land, especially on land, you can have a little search around. You can see what you find. If you want to rule that an object is lodged somewhere, then you can make... Um, a use tool check to dislodge it or if you want to rule that you need to do a search with um with a penalty or if someone's you know another creature's helping you can do a search with so you you kind of get better at games mastering this for yourself so we're going to draw an object we're going to find an object uh the object we find is a king of clubs oh oh my word okay we have found a locket with a torn photograph um, we found Barbara's locket. Right, that's that's fabulous. So we have got Barbara's locket. So I guess what we need to do is we need to take this back to Barbara. So um, I guess I haven't completed the objective yet because I haven't restored her eyesight. However... I don't, I'm not carrying anything at this moment in time. So I'm just going to write down what's, hap what's happened here. So um, I meet a vampire bat, just so I've got a note. I meet a vampire bat who thanks me for dispatching of the murderer and offers to help me in future 
Right, so this vampire bat, I guess what this vampire bat would do, though, is give me a, um, a, a special singing, something to sing, a special tune. So we'll say a, a dark tune has to be has to be sung. And I might rule something on that later, that every time I sing this tune, you know, something might go awry. Okay, I fly away and avoid some birds <laughs> performing a funeral because I've done I've done funerals and you know the other thing is I'm going to get a reputation for just doing funerals and I don't just want to be flying around doing that I've got I've got things to do uh, I'm going to put there I need to help Barbara Should I call her Babs? I can call her Babs. Babs the bunny, that's fine. Saves right now every time. Um, all right, so I fly away. Um, good, good. All right, so where are we good? What are we going to do now? So I fly away. We come to the... Uh, we hit some bad We hit bad weather. So what I'll say, in, as far as the story goes, we, ha we hit bad weather and... Yeah, we take shelter. Yeah, that's right. Take shelter in a clock tower. on the banks of the river. Cool. So we take shelter in a, a clock tower on the banks of the river. Um, we... Uh, there's an awkward encounter <laughs> with another rook. There's an awkward encounter with another rook and right let's see but we search we in the morning we have a look around in the morning we look around and hey we find the locket that babs needs that worries me because how was that locket that locket was supposed to be in the forest so whatever was in that forest, and that, that that forest is close to where this clock tower is. What has brought that locket here? I'm concerned. So who had that locket? How I never asked the I never asked Babs if the squirrel said who had the locket. They just said the locket was in a in the dead forest, in the haunted forest. Okay, so this could be something to worry about. I might be calling my bat friend sooner than. That's quite cool, isn't it? The bat sign. I've actually got a bat sign, so I can I can call vampire bat man. Okay, um, right then. Let's let's head off then. So this this time we need to. F I'm going to fly around the lake because I'm a little bit. The weather's bad on the lake, and I'm a little bit scared about the lake. So I'm going to fly around the lake. I'll see if things take a turn for the worse. So I'm still flying over this little village. It's a spread out village. It's kind of like a hamlet, so it's an agricultural one. There's farms, um, there's a few houses, uh, but it, it's very eerie. I, I want out of this place. Um, and I'm pretty sure that rook I met last night was a ghost. That That's the only explanation why they're not there in the morning. Um, I'm going to put ghost question mark after my encounter with that rook. A ghost rook. Okay, let's do a flight encounter. All right, just give me one second. Right, flight encounter. Um, back to encounters, event. Sorry, not encounter. Right, let's let's draw an event in flight. Oh, two spades. Okay, so as I am flying along. Um, I sense the presence of something near me. It's at this side, and I, I turn and look, and it's gone, and then I sense it the other side of me, and eventually I manage to catch an eye on this thing, and it's a very chirpy, mischievous jackdaw. Um, the jackdaw asks me where I'm going, and I, I say, I'm, I'm not... I don't really want to, um... 
I don't want to go over the lake because, you know, the the lake, I, I went over there, I got some damage from the waterfall, I there was a lot of bad weather over there, I want to try and go around the lake, and I'm going back up to, and then I think for a minute, I think, I, who can I trust around here? So I I just say I'm going home. I don't mention, I don't mention Barbara. Barbara's not, I'm not bringing Barbara into this. Okay. So, this little jackdaw says that it can accompany me. And maybe help me out for a little while. Not for long, because it has to get home. But um, it's happy to. Just give me a little bit of a hand. I reluctantly say yes, I'm gregarious. Um, but I do feel a little bit... After meeting the vampire bat... And the whole incident with the, the undead rat situation... I'm I'm feeling a little bit... This is my first time out in the world. I didn't know all these things existed. I thought everything else just looked like me. A, a sort of little small scrawny black rook um so i agree but i'm going to be a little bit cautious um yeah so i can go on to the next hex so i'm going to fly around and i'm going to draw another event in flight here comes another event fight four of hearts as we are flying we come across another bird in flight um it's a magpie um, the jackdaw and it's cheeky, um, it's, it's sort of cheeky characteristic, asks the magpie if it's stolen anything good recently, to which the magpie responds, you do realise that's a little bit of, um, um, a stereotype, you know, we don't actually steal things, if anything, crows are probably bigger thieves than us, um, it says, however, if you are on the lookout for anything, I can tell you where to find something. Um, not far from here. So let's see what it can tell us how to find. I do have stats for this magpie, but I'm not going to fight it, okay? I'm not going to fight a magpie. Right, so let's see what this magpie tells me we can find. And then the jackdaw can help me find it. So the jackdaw tells me... I've only got one slot left as well to carry things, because we can only carry two things, and I'm currently carrying... Um, scooped over my neck, I've got the locket with the torn photograph. Maybe I should have a look at the photograph as well in a moment. Anyway, let's see what we find. Four of diamonds, we find... We don't find that because that's... Cybercrow. <laughs> that would have been very strange. Um, he said, there's a poison dart. Okay, so in my mind, this instantly... Brings back memories of the murderer, the poison darts. He's been round here. Okay. So I did see a little boat on the lake. So I'm figuring out the murderer, who I have now dispatched, with one of his own poison darts. I'm figuring out the murderer has been around these areas. I'll tell you what I'm going to rule. I'm going to rule that the poison dart is empty, though. It's one that he's used. But I might stop and pick it up because... Um, I know there's scorpion stings around here as well. There are scorpions in this area. So we could maybe fill the poison dart with some of the scorpion stuff. And it might come in handy. It's going to be a, a bit of juggling around in objects. But yeah, I'm going to land. I'm going to land because I have to take two turns on land then. It's a bit annoying. But I'm thinking the poison did me good last time. So I'm going to get... Um, um, so let's have a look. So I meet a jackdaw. I'm I'm actually just writing off the page off the screen here. I meet a jackdaw who is way too friendly and offers me and offers to help me for a short while. Uh, we then meet a magpie. Who tells me the location of a poison dart. Okay. So the magpie's gonna leave. The jackdaw's gonna the jackdaw says that it'll come down with me and just you know, just just more out of curiosity, have a look for the this poison dart and then that's it. It's gonna go. It says it can't hang around much longer. Which is fine. We all got things to do. Okay, so I'm going to go down there. I'm going to take this. So I get a poison dart. So I currently 
own. At this point, I have, I'm going to write down here, I have a poison dart. And, um, and a locket. I nearly forgot what I had then, but I mean, the locket's the most important thing. But the poison dart is empty. Or it's sans poison. Okay, so let's take... Now, so we've landed here, which is a little bit annoying. We'll just move on one. So we've landed, so we need to take a couple of events and land, which is a bit annoying. But hey, we got a joker. So one turn, we can keep the joker, and that counts as one turn. Hey, hey. Um, let's have a look. Next event is the Six of Diamonds. So the event on land... You meet character. Make a successful event check, and they'll tell you about an object in location. Otherwise, they flee. Okay. Um... Let's see who we meet. Let's see who we meet. So we, we so we find the poison dart, and as we're looking at the poison dart, um, bumbling towards us is a... Here we go. Oh, oh no, that's fine. <laughs> okay. A hungover sailor. <laughs> okay. So, a hungover sailor... Um, uh, uh, this sailor obviously believes that in his his drunken stupor, he can um, he can speak to rooks. I have no idea what he's telling me. I'm gonna so I'm gonna rule that I have to make a. Let's have a look. Well, I've got to befriend this drunken sailor first. Um, yeah, so I would say that this drunken sailor is on on the turn. They they could go one way or the other. They could either see me as lunch or or as cute. So I'm going to see what this drunken sailor thinks of me first. I'm going to try I'm going to try look cute for this drunken sailor. I'm just going to like hop hop up in my sort of um, covid style. Um so that's a target of 7 and my befriend check gives me well I got a jack anyway, but my befriend check gives me um, one, two, three, four. I've got five ticks on befriend because I'm extremely gregarious and as scrawny as I am, I still look, I still look pretty cute as a, a small little rook. So yeah, he befriends me. He throws me a couple of bits of dry bread, and he proceeds to talk to me. He proceeds to tell me about all his wars and how different his life would have been if he'd never gone to sea. Um, I don't know what the sea is. Um, and I also probably don't understand what he's talking about. So I'm going to do a, he's going to start telling me about something he's lost, an object he's lost. So I'm going to do a signal check to see if I can understand anything from his motions. So the targets are two, which I, I mean, I get four. So I can kind of understand what he's, he, he draws something. He draws something in the sand with a stick. Because he obviously... He realises that I am um, an animal. Even though he's drunk, he realises that maybe he's got to communicate with me in another way. So he starts drawing something. So let's see what I actually... Let's see what object he draws. He draws a... Oh, this, yeah, okay, so this is quite fun because he does do a drawing, but this could be a complete misinterpretation by me as as far as I'm concerned, because I haven't seen much in life, but I do know I've seen a badger, I've seen a bunny, I've seen worms, I've seen a rat. So to me, it looks like he draws a bag of rat's whiskers. That's a bit weird. Um, on the prompt, it says weird. They must have some kind of use. So I, yeah, I mean... I don't know what to make of that. I, I think he could be drawing anything for me, but I feel like he's drawing a bag of rat's whiskers. So I, this is the weirdest. This is the first human I've met, and this is going to be... I don't think this is a good um, representation of humankind, or maybe it is, I don't know. But I make a, a mental note as a crow that I should probably avoid humans if possible, as friendly as I am. Um, so... Let's take another event on land. Um, this event is... Let's go for it. Ten. So we get another event on land, and then we can... I'm going to take off after this one. 
Uh, the weather takes a turn for the worse. If you're indoors, ignore the prompts. Otherwise, make a search check for a place to take shelter. I'm going to make a search check for a place to take shelter. That's a shelter. That's a three, and I get a seven. So that means I don't even need to check my stats for that. That's that's fine. Um, I find shelter. I find um, an old tree stump, and I, I nestle away there into the roots of it, and I wait the weather out, and then I take flight again. What I do see... When I take flight, though, ahead of me is what looks like um. Well, we can see that there. It looks like a deserted town. So, I'm still in the mind to go back and help Babs, but also curious as to what might be in the deserted town. What do I do? Hmm. No, I'm. I'm. No, I'm. I'm heading back to. I'm heading back to Babs. I need to. I need to complete an objective. Um. So let's let's go back. Let's try and get. Let's try and restore her eyesight. Um, yeah. So we're going to take an event in flight. So let's do that. Um, so I. <laughs> so as soon as I take take flight, I spot the same magpies again. Um. I'm not going to make a befriend check this time because I'm going to rule that it's the same magpies. <laughs> They're lost again. Um, no, I am going to make a befriend check because at first they blame me. They say I give them the wrong direction, so I'm going to I'm going to rule that I do have to make the befriend check because these magpies I met a day or so a day ago yesterday, and um, yeah, I think I have to make a befriend check. Otherwise, I got to get out of dodge because I don't think they're going to be happy. So the target's three, two, and but I got. Five, so that's really cool. That's fine. Okay, so they take a little bit of convincing, but I do manage to convince them that you know it, it's it's not me, it's them. I definitely gave them the right direction. So they offer to do another preen check. I've got one injury still, so I'm going to take them up on their on their ritual. So they're gonna they're gonna do another ritual for me. It worked last time. Um, oh, so I got to do um. I got a queen and preen I've got three, so I need to get nine or above eight. So the preen check doesn't work. Um one of my injuries is gonna take a little bit more healing. It's it's not something that, you know, a couple of sort of like tugs on my feathers from a magpie are gonna gonna help straighten out. I need to I need time for this one to heal. But that's fine. I'm gonna carry on in flight. Um I'm gonna draw another event. Let's see where we get to. Nine of spades. As I am flying, something comes hurtling towards me in the breeze. Literally, I, I don't even hardly get a chance to um, duck from it. Um, i got to make an evade check. Ten. My evade scores two, so I need to draw um, eight or more. I draw 10. So the cards have been very good to me these last two sessions. So, yeah, I managed to just at the last moment do a, a, a spin motion and right myself again. It falls to the ground. Okay. Now, this is interesting because I don't see what it is. So do I go to the ground and try and get this? Yeah, I'm going to go to ground and try and get this. So I'm going to land... And I'm going to try and get this object. I want to see what it is. Let's have a look. Yes. Okay. All right. So let's let's see what we let's see what we find. Um. I've got two objects at the moment. I've got a poison dart as well. So six of clubs. What do I find? I find a cracked monocle. Interesting. Has my... Yeah, my little guy here, my little crow is wearing a monocle. So I'm going to... Um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move the book forward a little bit as well. So you can see. Yeah, so I find a cracked monocle. I'm going to drop the poison dart because the monocle... I'm thinking about Babs here. If, if Babs' eyesight is not too good... I'm thinking this monocle might help. 
yeah, I'm um I'm gonna wear it. I'm gonna wear the monocle. So at this moment in time, I am now carrying so I'm gonna have to drop the poison dart. I'm not even gonna mark where the poison dart is because it's em it's empty. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna say I find a monocle. So uh, I let's have a look. So I find a monocle. It's cracked though. Is that any good? What could I use it for? Um, I guess I can make search checks with authority while I've got it. Okay. Well, you know. I don't realise that, but I will next time I try to use it. So I'm going to underline search because I get to make search checks with authority on my on my character sheet. It's fantastic. Um, okay, so let's let's take another turn on on land now. So we we are skirting. I'm sorry, you can't see that that well. I wonder if I can zoom out a wee bit. And maybe I zoomed in. Might give you a little bit more there now that yeah that's that's better right that's definitely better so i can move that back there we go okay so i am i am now here i'm heading up to here so i'm flying my way around the river there we go i can just probably zoom out a little bit more oh no that's focus sorry just get that back in focus i can zoom out a little bit more that should should be okay i think right okay um you do need to play be like a crow quite a lot of space i have seen people playing on roll 20 so so you can do that as well all right so let's do this let's draw i guess i'm going to take off anyway so let's draw another event i've nearly done this pile let's have a look um, so, next event. This is an event in flight. Let's have a look. Events, events, events. So, the next event is Seven of Diamonds. So, let's see. Oh! We've got a fight. No sooner have I taken off. We are at the side of the... Um, we are at the side of the lake. A gull who obviously thinks I'm taking its fish territory. Um, yeah, we've got a gull. So here we go. we got some fight. we got a fight on our hands. Let's try this. So I got to make an evade check or fight. I'm going to rule that this thing is big and it comes at me. So too fast. Its wingspan is way over mine. So I'm going to fight it. So we've got um, gull fight. Goal. Fight. So the goal stats are it gets plus two to any check it does. It has three injury points and it does one damage. Um, let's have a look. What happens? Oh yeah, so I'm not going to evade because if I evade, I have to go left or right immediately. If I even that's if I'm successful. Okay, so it's fight time. Right, let's fight the goal. Oh, I'm upside down. Yeah, I can flip the screen. Yeah, sorry, that would make a lot more sense. Sorry about that. Um, let's have a look. I can, I can flip the screen. Let's have a look. I just just give me one moment so I can do transform um, so we need to flip vertical yes that's got to be 10 times oh no and then flip horizontal because my it does my writing look all right to you now what is my writing let's have a look yeah, I, because I'm now writing the wrong way. So, yeah, everything's right. Okay, and then I just need to do this. Yeah, of course I can. Uh, transform and then flip. Horizontal. Hey, okay. All right, that makes a lot more sense now. All right. Perfect. I'm just going to have a drink.
There we go. All right, sorry about that. I didn't realize I was so much into story. I didn't realize that everything was upside down and the wrong way around, but there we go. Um, thanks for bearing with me. All right, so please, if, if ever you're watching and something looks wrong or something's not right, just just shout. It's fine. I can I can sort it out on the stream. Um, so the gull fight, let's do this. So fortunately, I see this gull coming towards me, but I am going to get the first attack. So in Be Like a Crow, you always get the first attack. So I'm going to take a, um, a peck at this gull. So I'm going to just literally try... But the only way I've learned to fight so far is by just diving like an arrow at something. I did I did it at the the murderer, and I'm going to use that technique again. I'm just going to literally just bring my wings in tight and just head straight up this gull like a dart. And I... Um, okay, so I get six... And his evade score is 8 plus 2 is 10. So this gull evades me. Um, and it's now going to be the gull's attack. So the gull is... Wow, turn 13. So the gull um, just pulls back, wafts its wing and hits me really hard and sends me flying. That could do some damage to me. I've got to try do my evade check to make sure I don't get hurt. 5-7. So it does one injury to me. So, yeah, I'm going to say it bends my wing slightly, which hurts. So that's going to make it a bit harder for me to fly. Oh, dear. So um, it's my turn at the goal. I am going to... Um, I'm going to attempt to peck it again because, well, an ace. Wowzers. Okay. Um, that's not good. That's not good. It's going to evade that immediately. Okay, and it's going to instantly try and show me what a real peck is because it's going to hammer me with its big bill. That's nine. So on evade, I need to get seven or more to evade. I get a nine. So I managed to just um, spin out of the way. Um, and I'll tell you what I'm going to do because I've got two injuries. And this thing is massive. I'm going to try evade. So this means I forfeit my turn, um, and it gets, um, um, I guess, what would be the equivalent of an attack of opportunity. So it gets to try and attack me. So it gets to try and beat my evade now. So it attacks me. So that's a, a joker. So there's two ways of ruling jokers. If you're playing pro crow mode, the joker is an instant hit for your enemy. Otherwise, you keep it and you draw your next card. So the next card that we draw is a queen. So it's, it's attack is a queen so we've depleted the deck i'm gonna roll the deck i'm gonna sorry i'm going to um shuffle the deck so i'm going to tell you what i am going to do here now because i've got two jokers i'm going to use one of my jokers to make a successful evade check because jokers are wild cards they do several things in this game and one of the things they do is they make you automatically succeed on a check so they're a bit like nat 20s apart from you can save them um so yeah, let's let's do that. Here we go. I'll just give these a really good shuffle. They are really nice cards of these as well. We they they were part of the you can get them on the website now, criticalkit.co.uk, criticalkit.us. Um they were part of the original Kickstarter, but they are really nice cards. Okay. Um, you can just use a normal deck of playing cards as well for the game. Also, if you do like the game, if you like the look of it, again, criticalkit.co.uk. There's PDF versions of it, um, and there are um, physical copies of it as well. Um, and all you really need is a notebook, a pen, um, and the rules. That's it. On oh, no, a deck of cards, of course. Um, I did actually add a rule earlier on if you missed it. I used a die, but that's because you can, you can use... You can make some of your own rules up as you go along if you want. The whole idea is just to um, encourage you to storytell. Okay, so here we go. So we're all we're all the right way up now for the last twenty minutes or so of the stream. Um, I'm going to play my Joker and I'm going to make an evade check, which means I can get away 
it means I can actually get away from um, this thing. So that's one joker gone. If I was playing in pro crow mode, I would have put my jokers back before I um, shuffle the deck. Because when you deplete the player deck, that gives you more of a sort of, it's a more hardcore version is pro crow, which, you know, makes it more challenging. Uh, it also adds, uh, you know, some more stakes into the game because you have to use your, um, you have to decide whether using your jokers is good because you will eventually lose them. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to play my joker. So there's one. I'm playing um, baby rook mode. I don't. I I'm squishy, so I don't want to hurt him. Okay, so I've got away from that goal. I'm going to move to the next hex around the corner of the lake. There, I'm still flying, so I'm going to take another event. Um, Susie Anne says I started building my magpie today after getting the physical copy. Amazing, absolutely excellent. Well, um, do feel free to share anything. You know your games. We've got a Reddit, um, which is be like a crow. Um, if you, you know, if you feel like you want to, please share a link to anything, be it a YouTube video, um, uh, a, a WordPress blog, anything, anything you do, Tumblr, any, any kind of way that you document it and you want to share it, please, please do so because we've had a few people share videos, um, of this, this game being played. There's even a Spanish version of it now. There's someone play. well, we don't have a Spanish version. We're working on that, but there's a, um, um, a Spanish games tester who, who plays out there, so I think it's Seven Dias de Rol, um, out on YouTube. If you search for Be Like a Crow, you'll probably find it on YouTube. Um, and there's this, there's this stream. All right, let's 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 go for an event in flight. We got a jack of clubs. You fly into low cloud or miss, make a navigation check. Okay, I've got to make a navigation check because it becomes very misty. Again, there's a lot of mist around the side of this lake, which makes sense. There's a lot of mist in general in this area. Okay, let's do... Um, Ace is the target. Five, that's fine. So I don't have any problems there, and I can move on to the next hex. So I'm getting close. To, I wonder if we'll get to... get back to Babs. And I can also pick something up that I dropped. I think it was the quill. Okay, let's see what happens in this hex. Two of spades... Um, yeah, again, we meet another Jack Jack Doe who offers to accompany us and help us at the next location. So this is cool. So we are actually making some headway now. So we'll see what happens in the next location. This is nice. Um, Ten. Right, so it says you come across Jack Doe. I would say that this Jack Doe is a different Doctor and it has an object. And they will, they offer me in return for an object I currently have. Hmm. Hmm. Do I want to give my monocle away? Well, let's see what object they've got, because I guess I need to know whether I'm actually even interested in what this jackdaw's got. All right. Queen. This jackdaw has got a scratch silver baby... A scratch silver baby rattle. It's shiny, and it makes noise. Yeah. I want it. I'm swapping this for my monocle. I'm going to I'm going to give the monocle to the jackdaw. I mean there's nothing a trade's good, right? A trade. It's yeah. So I'm going to I'm going to give away uh, I'm just going to put I have it there. So I'm going to give away the monocle. So I'm going to give away my monocle and I'm gonna uh, in return for a scratched baby rattle yeah because I actually know what you can use this for anyway in the game you can use this to put an enemy off by shaking it shaking it so um yeah. Oh, I left... Did I leave the gargoyle's fingernail up there? I think I did. Uh, yeah. Okay, Queen of Clubs, let's see. Yeah, shake this rattle in place of a combat attack and make an evade check with authority and you can flee without actually taking... You can just flee. You don't have to... You don't get an attack of opportunity, so to speak. Okay, so that's cool. So I've, I've swapped to Monocle. I've done a little trade. 
whilst I'm on my way back to see Babs. So the next one I move, Eight of Spades. Um, so next event in flight is, oh, Eight of Spades. This is another cross performing a funeral. I'm going to, I'm going to do the thing I did before. These, the same group of crows, they're not doing very well. These crows, they're they're sort of moving around and they keep getting injured. This could be related to something that comes up later on, though, because there could be a reason these crows are. Um, they might be fighting to save a village or anything. There could be something going on, a big battle between rival crows. I'm going to fly past them. Target of six, seven. Okay, so they don't notice me. Whew, Whew that was close. Um, great. So I can, I, I feel bad about that now. I feel like I should have probably, probably helped them. But anyway. Um, okay, so let's, we're head, we're, we're yeah, we're probably going to get to complete the objective helping Babs get her eyesight back. Um, so four of spades. A tailwind gives you haste. Advance immediately to the next hex. This is beautiful. Okay, so we're only two. Um, we're only two hexes away from getting this locket to Babs now. We should better do it. Famous last words. Okay. Um, eight of hearts. Um, a sudden gust of wind knocks you sideways. Make a fly check or drop one object you are carrying. Oh no. Okay. Um, do I play my Joker? Um, no, I, I, I want the, I want some stakes, so I'm gonna make a fly check. Oh no, a king. Um, so my fly skill is one, two, three, four. So I need to get nine or above nine, ten, jack, queen. King, yeah, I need to get nine or above. All right, I've got to get nine or above. Otherwise, this tailwind is going to knock me and it's going to cause me to lose an object. Um, I got an eight. I needed nine. All right, so here's how I'm going to do this. I am going to... I'm going to get a coin. This is another chance for me to plug the mine rack and a dice. <laughs> I'm going to grab a coin from the mine rack and a dice. You can get these on Kickstarter at the moment. In fact, we've got two or three days left. I'm going to grab a coin because I'm going to see which object I drop. Okay, so. Um, I'm currently carrying um, a, a scratch baby rattle in a claw and I've got a locket round my neck. The locket is, the locket is vital for me to achieve another objective. Okay, so we're going to say that if it's cups, it's the locket that I lose. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it's the locket. And if it's the critical kit logo, then I'm going to drop the scratch baby rattle. All right, let's see. Are we ready? Drum roll. Oh no! It's the locket. I dropped the locket. Okay. We're so close. I'm pretty sure we're still going to do this. I drop the locket. Um, okay. So I am going to have to... That was for a... What am I going to have to do? I'm going to have to land. I'm landing in this hex and I'm only... I'm so close. I'm so close to completing this first this first objective as a juvenile. This will be my third objective completed. All right, let's do it because if we do this, if we can get to the end of this, then I can we can finish the stream. Um, no, okay, yeah, all right, yeah, that's a good point. At least it was in the lake. Yeah, the, that would have been a nightmare. Okay, let's do a check. Uh, so an event on land. So we got an event on land. So nine of spades. Okay. I spot an object. All oh, right, this works perfectly. Okay, I spot an object, but it's stuck. So the locket has become wrapped 
on a, 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 a there's a thorny dead sort of like bush um the twigs from a bush and it's become locked over it so i'm gonna get um a, a stick because this is what crows and rooks are good at right i'm gonna grab a stick and i'm gonna try and like unhook it so i can get it back so the target for this is 10 my use tool check is one which means um i'll tell you what i'm gonna play my joker and succeed okay so i'm gonna I'm going to unhook this, so I've got my locket back. I have to take another turn on land, though. So I now, I, I kind of, what I do is I, I then, I get the uh, a twig in my mouth, and I manage to pull it up this sort of bit of old dead bush that's just sticking out of the ground, and I then flip it, and it slides all the way down the pole and over my head and round my neck again. So I've got the locket back round my neck. Okay. Um, because that's because I played my Joker, which just gives you a, a, a total success. It's kind of like a nat 20. All right, so um, on that note, let's get on with the next turn on land. My next turn on land, this, this, this tracks, you know what? I'm hungry. I need to make a search check for my favourite snack. Um, tell you what. What is my favourite snack? I mean, I'm a Corvid. I think everything's... I think magpies are the worst. Anything's their favourite snack. I think I probably prefer worms and insects. So I'm going to have a little um, look around for a cucaracha. So let's do a search check. So the target is a queen. So my search skill, I got rid of the monocle as well. I got one. Oh, no, I don't get search checks with advantage anymore because the monocle's gone. I got one, so I need to get a jack. No, which means I'm hungry. So all my checks are made with penalty. Um, so at the end of my next turn, I can make another check. I am I can fly now at least. So I can fly. So I'm going to fly. So I'm going to take off. Um, so I take off back into the air again. I don't have far to fly, but it's uh, obviously flying is a lot quicker for me. Uh, I'm going to move up one. I'm going to take one event, then I'm going to land, and we're going to see Barbara. Okay. Three of spades. You spot an object on land to obtain it, you need to land and take two turns. Well, do you know what? I'm going to ig ignore this, and I'm just going to fly and land straight in the church. So I'm back where I started the game last session. I'm going to land, and I'm going to see if I can see Barbara. I do a quick check, an ace, but I get one on, so whew, that was ridiculous. I got a two, but an ace is low in this game. Um, I spot Barbara. She's she's in a corner, and I I take her the um, I take her over the necklace, the locket, um, and I give it to her. And she um, she puts it on, and nothing happens. And she says, you have to sing. So I, I'm i going to do a sing check. Three, ten, because I'm good at singing. I do sing, and as I'm singing the song, this sort of white milky sheen that's been over her eyes vanishes. And she, she says to me, I'm going to, I, I don't know how I can ever repay you. I'm, I'm going to head back to the village and I am going to go back to my magician and this is it. Maybe, maybe one day you can come and see the show. If you're passing, you can. You can come and help, but now I can see I can make my, make my way back. And I, I tell her that if I could help her, I would help her. But I'm too small. I can't carry her. She's way bigger than me. Um, But she says that's fine. But she also tells me that she knows of something else I might be able to help with. 
I'm going to generate another objective and then that objective is going to be where we end the session. So oh, I'm also going to pick up, I've given her the locket, so I'm going to pick back up before I generate anything. Before we finish, we will write down what we have. We completed the objective, a white raven's feather quill. So I'm going to write that down. We have a white raven's feather quill, which I believe I can write in the sky with, which is pretty cool. And we have a... I've still got the Scratch Baby Rowl, right? Because I didn't actually drop that. I dropped the... <laughs> we have the Scratch Baby Rowl. Okay, cool. And yeah, let's let's see what let's see what Barbara's objective is before we finish. This will be the second thing that Barbara's asked me to do. Um. Okay, let's take the prompts. We're going to generate an objective. Um, seven of Hearts. I. Tell Barbara that I, I'm, I'm trying to make myself look good and, and let her know that I did really struggle to get this. And I tell her about the things I've done. Um, but I also say that there's a, there's a... The mists seem to be getting bad all across the land. There's When I was on my travels, there wasn't a lot of mist when I started, but the mist felt like it was slowly creeping in and it wasn't getting much better. And around the lake, it felt like it was crawling into the, to the lake. She says that she has heard a rumour that um, a certain character, we're going to find out who that character is now before we finish the stream. Um, oh, interesting. A jilted groom. A jilted groom is causing the mist. Dark magic being cast by a jilted groom is causing the mist to spread across the land. She says that she believes that they are in... Um, let's find out what location they're in. They are in the sewers beneath the city. So let me let me write this one down. So Babs tells me that the mists are dark magic. Caused by an angry wizard who was abandoned, who was stood up at the altar. He wants everyone to pay. For his misfortune. Um, he doesn't sound like that good a guy to be with anyway, really. Um, he wants everyone to pay for his misfortune. But apparently, the rumour is that he has a source of his power. And if someone can take the source of that power from him, the dark mists will cease to be. Shall we find out before we finish up what that is? Because I've got a feeling that I'm going to be the, the rook for the job. Whether I like it or not. You know, I've I've impressed Barbara thus far, so I may as well carry on now. Um, the object. Let's do one more draw for the object. Five of clubs. The object is a bobbin of gold and thread. A bobbin of gold and thread is the source. Of his power. I'm sure we can put some story, something related to the wedding around that. Um, it never runs out. Oh, so this bobbin also, if I can get hold of it, it has got a special quality insofar as it allows me to always get, it allows me to get to any hex that I've previously visited while I've been carrying it. So, Maybe as soon as I get hold of this bobbin of thread, 
um, whatever powers it gives him. For me, it, for me, this bobbin of thread would give me the power to, whenever I've been carrying it, I can return to any hex, literally like that, just like magic. Well, exactly like magic. Okay, excellent. So we have got, we've completed our first objective as a juvenile. So one objective completed as a juvie and three to go okay and we are currently carrying a white raven's feather and a scratch baby rattle that's amazing okay excellent yeah so that that went well sorry that everything was upside down for um a big chunk of the stream uh, just if you're watching this on youtube afterwards just flip your screen upside down um excellent so yeah so we uh what a good session we managed to get across the haunted lake um we made a friend in a vampire bat and i'm sure that will come back to haunt me we we met quite a few other birds as well on our travels did notice that there was um, a lot of mist creeping across the land and subsequently when we did eventually find the locket in a clock tower which, again, why was the locket in the clock tower when it was supposed to be in the woods? I'm sure someone's going to come looking for that. Someone's going to come looking for that. Um, yeah, yeah. so the other yeah, the other thing that worries me is that if I... I probably didn't... I probably didn't clean up after myself like any bedding or nest I made in the clock tower, so I've left clues behind that I was there. And also there was... There was a witness. There was another rook. Eek. Um, and yeah, I, I made it back though. I got Barbara her um, locket. I completed that objective and now Barbara's quite disinterestedly told me what she believes is the reason for the mist. But the bobbin she told about me about, actually, if I'm going to travel about a lot around this area, that that intrigues me. Okay, excellent. That went very well. Um, I'm going to put everything away now. Because next session I do get to um, use the cards again. Um, I put my little dice away. Yeah, so please, if you um, if you enjoy the stream, please just um, or you know if you're watching this on YouTube, um, please do join us um, next Thursday at seven p.m. BST. That's um, eleven p. Pacific time because that's the only reference point I know. Um, just follow us on Twitch anyway because we do have lots of other different streams planned and things things coming up. And I also do an interactive world building um, stream where the people in the chat build the world. We, it was really fun. We did our first one. We created the, the tavern at the center of the universe. We are going to work out from that. Go watch the first one of those on YouTube. Um, it's a lot of fun. We created a, an amazing bit of lore around it. And yeah, just please follow us on Twitch. Uh, then you'll get notifications. And if you if you um, viewing us on YouTube, please just subscribe, um, hit the notification button uh, because we we do a couple of streams a week, and then a couple of times a month we're going to do one shots, and hopefully maybe later on start um, a D and D campaign. So, listen, thank you very much, everybody, for joining me, and um, I will see you next time. Goodbye.